Hi guys, Bruce here. Well, it's November 2022. And this is my 10th year of being on YouTube. So yes, 10 years ago, this November, I started my YouTube channel. And now I call myself Bruce's Shop. Back then, I think it was... Oh man, it was something really obscure, like it looked like a license plate, like B, it was BTH version 1. And that was because uh, I retired from my main job and then I became a handyman for a few years, you know, for finances. And I called myself Bruce the Handyman version 1 because the handyman can never do the same thing twice. And uh, that kind of stuck and moved over to my YouTube channel. And uh, over the years, it changed to Bruce's Shop, which has been, I think, a better, a better handle or a better name for my shop. And uh, and here I am, ten years later, still doing almost two videos a week. I'm sitting at just for your information. I'm not bragging or anything because you know, in ten years, the numbers add up. I've got uh, forty-two thousand subscribers in a week or two, and uh, I've been doing about two videos a week on that. You know, not always, you know, sometimes, you know, life gets busy and you don't get two, two videos. And that's been really hard. That's one of my challenges right now is getting two videos a week. So, yes, that first video that I did, uh, it was an 832 John Deere snowblower. Eight horsepower, 32 inch auger. Big, a big blower, right? And I said in the, I think in the description, rebuild of an 832 snowblower. But anyway, when I filmed it, I filmed it with a Samsung laptop or a Samsung netbook laptop, a little guy. So you flip up the screen and that's the camera that I used was in the was in the lid, right? There was no 4K, there was no I don't even think, you know, HD existed. And uh, when I started in the video, I start the engine and the engine was so much distortion for the mic inside that uh, little laptop that it cut the mic out. So on my very first video I had to learn how to do a voiceover too. I'm just nuts, right? So anyway, I got the video done and away I went. Bought a camera right away. Uh, but it still didn't have very good uh, quality, I guess you could say. But anyway, I mucked my way through it. And here we are today, 10 years later. and. I have not worked on a on a John Deere snowblower, I don't think, for the entire 10 years. So it's really kind of freaky that November of 2012 I was working on a John Deere snowblower and in November 2022 I'm working on my second John Deere snowblower. Now I've worked on lots of John Deere stuff, John Deere tractors, you know, five or six of them and, and uh, John Deere lawnmowers, generators, all kinds of different stuff, but this is, I think this is my second John Deere snowblower. Could be wrong. But anyway, here it is. TRS24. And oh my gosh, so I think the same things fail with, with makes, right? I had to scrounge that pulley because the guy I got it from had to use a ball peen hammer to get that pulley off, and I had to use a ball peen hammer to get my uh, pulley off of this one. On the first video, sorry. So that's the other half of it. They come apart like a clamshell. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that because the video will be out shortly. So anyway, yes, 10 years on YouTube. Uh, when I started watching YouTube, and if I leave anybody out, please forgive me, but I started following Zippo Varga on YouTube. Great guy. I could kind of relate to what he was doing. He could do everything from build and renovate a house to change a clutch on a, on a brakes. Uh, he does bigger stuff, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of tractor work, like uh, yard tractors and stuff like that. Uh, sense of humor, right? And then I uh, start and I was watching Donny Boy seventy three, whose videos are technically perfect. Like, oh my gosh, the work that he must put into those videos. You know, I I turn my camera on. And, shaking all over the place. I'm working on leaving the camera on a tripod. Thank you, Mr. Zippo. And uh, 805 Road King, 
was another one that I kind of admired because of, uh, number one, he was he took some young men under his wing and taught them how, to, how things worked. And, uh, if you watch his channel, there's you know, Mike and Little Dirt Bike and Daddy Dirt Bike and all those guys on that channel. And, and that channel's still cooking today, you know. And uh, so thanks for the three of you guys and all of the other people that I've uh, mentored, no, that have mentored me. Now I'm mentoring other people. I think. I think so. Uh, you know, Ken Small Engines, Mixed Mowers. There's nobody in order here, right? From Denmark, Hobby Motor, and lots of others. Lots and lots of others. So I just wanted to put in a few names there. You know, it's fun. So anyway, thank you. Uh, 10 years, November 2012 to November 2022. What a crazy, crazy ride. It's been fun. It's been, it's kept my mind, oh, track. It's kept my mind active, my body active. I think it's been very good for me physically. Uh, it's been just wonderful. So thank you very much for everybody who supported my channel over the years. Uh, I appreciate every one of you. Your generosity has been unbelievable. People have sent me things, and tools, and gifts, and that's not what it's about. It's about it's about making the videos and just showing what I do, and maybe other, somebody else will learn something and try it. And that's what it's about. It's about you know helping others, and and maybe they they can do the same thing for somebody else, the same or different, right? So anyway, thank you very much. Moving on. In this video now, I've attached some of the older videos going back, like that one with the sound that cut out and some other ones too, and it's just a lot of fun. So thanks a lot. Keep watching, uh, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Great. Okay, all you folks out there in... Uh Internet land. This I've been working on this snowblower for about three months. It's totally restored. Uh, it's never been started since I painted it and reassembled it. I just put uh, two inches of gas in the tank. I primed it with primer. A little more of that. It's in neutral. We've got about three quarters throttle, full choke, and it should start without tearing across the hatch. Just be very careful. Well, hello out there. Uh, it's Bruce here, and I'm just uh, inserting some audio files uh, where there's uh, no audio on the video. The uh, poor mic on my laptop isn't a very good mic, and uh, it went into feedback after I started the snowblower. So that's what's happened. Um, so during the video itself, you'll see that I've uh, started up the snowblower, and I'm adjusting the uh, Oh, the choke and the throttle, and then I uh, I uh, move it forward a little bit, checking the drive, remembering that this has never been started since I reassembled it, and then I actually uh, put the uh, snowblower auger in into uh, gear and check that, all very nervously. So you can see uh, that I am quite nervous when I do it. And during the slow parts of the video, I have speeded the video up from two times to eight times. Thank you. Well, that was probably boring for you, but I did get it running. While I'm back, you'll see that I had a tiny bit of audio at the end when I turned the snowblower off and the feedback went away. So the next part of this uh, small presentation are the uh, pictures I took with my digital camera. And you'll notice that the, uh, the first three pictures are the uh, snowblower when I brought it home, and I paid $35 for it. Uh, and the next group of pictures are the uh, disassembly and you'll see that at the back of that green housing I pulled the pulley off and I totally destroyed that pulley taking it off and uh, I had to uh, eventually get two different pulleys to put it all together. I then uh, proceeded to sand everything down and uh, get everything ready for paint and uh, that took me a long time. The, uh, the big housing which uh, holds the auger I uh, sanded, primed and painted that and uh, as we move along, you'll see that uh, each piece of the snowblower was uh, 
to the best of my ability, sanded and painted. Um, uh, I put a lot of pieces on the bench for two, two days to dry before I actually assembled everything. And then uh, you'll also see that uh, first attempt at my pulley, uh, the cast iron one that, that doesn't cover the shaft quite far enough. Uh, and then I took a, some more pictures of the uh, trouble spots. One was the uh, the auger room gear. Uh, I painted the chains on the tires. I put in a uh, what you might call a, a period correct bleed cock on the metal tank. And uh, moving along from there, I uh, painted the chrome handlebars black, which took a lot of sanding. Uh, and then I finally got the snowblower re rebuilt and reassembled and uh, I put some stickers on the uh, snowblower that weren't John Deere stickers because I couldn't find them. But anyway, thanks a lot. Okay, YouTubers, we're almost done the old snowblower here. This is my second attempt at uh, uploading something. And uh, today I am going to finish my old snowblower. All I have to do is drill and tap a hole in the end of this knob for the shifter knob on the snowblower. I'll show you that. I ordered this from uh, somewhere in eBay and it came with the wrong thread size. So I drilled it out and I filled it with a, a material, it's like a wet bonding material that dries hard. And we're going to tap a 5 16 hole in this and we're going to use it to do the final completion process of the rebuild of my John Deere 832 snowblower. So right now I'll just give you a, a look at the snowblower. You might not have seen my last video. <coughs> Pardon me, the, the audio in the video was really, really bad. So I'm trying a new camera today. And we'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to do a circle of the old snowblower and uh, then we'll continue to tap uh, 5 16 hole in this for the shifter knob which you will see that's missing. So we'll just, I'll just show you the snowblower now. And the rest of the snowblower is complete. I've actually got a few hours on it now so you'll see some scratches which are all which is fine on a snowblower because they Oops, so I just have to go around something here. They do take a beating. So there's the front augers all painted. Shoot's done. In my last video, it's called uh, Rebuild John Deere 832 Snowblower. You'll be able to see what I went through to build it. Anyway, there we go. And we'll just back up to the desk. Okay guys, down here at my vise, the first thing we're going to do on this ball is we're going to drill two holes in it. <clears throat> Number one is going to be a tap with this small bit. We're going to drill almost all the way through. I've put a piece of tape on there to tell me when I know when to stop drilling. And then the second uh, hole I drill is going to be with a quarter inch drill bit. And that, you would think it would be 5 16 but the threads take up room. So this is the 5 16 nut that matches that gear shift knob and you want the, the bit just to fit in there so that when you cut it with the threads the threads will cut a larger diameter thread so let's just see if we can do this now we'll get my drill hope you don't mind the weight that looks pretty close no a little bit more to the other that should work. Now we're going to drill. I put some material around here so that the teeth marks on the vise don't mark the ball. Whenever you tap a hole, you go a little bit and then you come back out which gets rid of the cuttings. Go a little further each time. This is 
It's called chasing. Once you get it all done and you want to clean it out, it's called chasing the threads. Now I'm not a, an expert at this. I just uh, have learned over time how to do these things. So I'm sure somebody will probably find something I'm doing wrong. But my gosh, it's only a $5 shifter knob, right? Now, I'm going to put a piece of tape on there just to see if it matches the depth of my drill bit. Here we go. Okay, let's just have a look at that. Oh, there we go. That looks pretty close, doesn't it? So now I've got a, pardon me, I've got a 5 16th bolt here that we can just try and thread in here, see if we have the right thing happening. Hey, magic! So let's try and see if it fits onto the snowblower now. And I'm sure it will. I'll take you with me. Well, there you go, folks. You've just witnessed the completion of my rebuild of the John Deere 832 8 horsepower snowblower. Well, I think we're done the, uh, the build of this old snowblower, and I'd like to thank everybody for watching. And uh, we're going to do one, I say we because I include the audience, but we're going to do one more start up and uh, one, have one more look at this old snowblower when she's running. So, here we go. So, thanks for watching. Hello folks, Bruce Pender here. Well, this is my uh, channel trailer for YouTube. I'll just keep this short. Uh, this little uh, clip you're about to see is just a, just a very few of the videos that I've produced in the last while. Just to give you an idea of what I do on YouTube and uh, sharing my life with, with you folks out there. So anyway, enjoy. If you like, hit the like button. And uh, if you'd like to, you can subscribe as well. But just enjoy. That's what it's all about. Thanks a lot. I'll see you later. Here we go. So those of you who pour foundations, don't clean out the chute of the concrete truck into the backyard that's not finished yet. But if this is what's going to happen, and then that circle, the two inch circle will go on top of this, and then we'll have a two layered heavy gauge sheet steel and now this is going to be our complete patch so although it is a double panel fender box fender so it's pretty smooth oh there you have it folks
So like I said in my last video, I'm starting to like yellow and green. You might call me crazy, but this is how we're going to clean the get inside of this gas tank. I've strapped it to the chains of my yard tractor, and I'm just going to putt up and down the alley with the gravel rolling around inside that tank. It's in neutral. So now here we are in the alley and uh, I have to use the snowblower right behind the garage because there's no place to put the snow. This was our second snowfall in three days. So now the, uh, the window is getting bigger and we're working our way back down west again. And it's so much faster than the snowblower. It, uh, it, uh, this would have taken a long time. With to put the 90 degree angle into our piece, like that, and kind of get, get an idea of what we're trying to do. So there's my angle cut, and that's going to mount from the bottom just like that. So I'm really, really happy with those. Well, hello tubes. BTHV1 here. First, the handyman version one, as the handyman never does the same thing twice. Well, today we're going to show you how I built my welding table. Um, I used a uh, Sears 230 amp AC welder that was given to me with the materials. Some of them were scrounged, and some of them were uh, material that I bought. The top shelf or the top of the table is quarter inch plate, two feet by three in two feet by three feet, and the bottom shelf was three sixteenths plate, uh, just a little bit smaller because I had to cut it to fit. Uh, underneath here, you can see my welds. They were about two or three inches long maximum because I didn't want to warp the top of the table. As a beginner welder, I wanted to weld everything. But I knew from my welding class, I took a, a welding class at a community college, that you have to really watch for warpage. But at, by the time I finished, I did weld the end of every piece of angle iron, which is actually four welds on the end of each piece. The uprights were two by two square tubing, and the uh, supports were one and a half inch angle iron and in a couple of places I actually spliced angle iron together to make it longer uh, and then after it was all welded it was so strong there's nothing that'll crush this thing. For welding rods I used 6011 and 6013 and uh, this is a 1 8 inch 6013 weld that you'll see here and uh, normally 6013 isn't good where you have a lot of vibration but on something like this it's really really good and with AC 6013 lays down a pretty good weld. Not professional but not bad for a beginner. So as I piece the table together I had to keep a lot of things in mind. Uh, one was that lower shelf and another one was the height because I added uh, really good quality ball bearing wheels to this little cart. I used uh, the 3 16 plate to make the feet for the table where the wheels screw on and underneath here I had some brackets, surplus brackets left over that I welded up underneath here to hold all of the uh, angle grinder cords and some of the cords from the welder. Next I added, uh, you can't see the other one, but I added some pretty heavy U-brackets on the side to hold the stinger cable from the welder. And now you can see the uh, 3 16 uh, shelf that was put on the bottom, and that's plenty strong enough for all of the stuff I have. So here you can see the little feet and the ball bearing wheels that I put on this. And also, I primed and painted the entire table, except the top, 
because you want the current to flow through the top and you can lay your welding piece anywhere you want. And you'll also see on the side there, uh, there's four welded brackets to hold my angle grinders. Now if you look behind the table, there's a knee in the wall, which actually worked out really good except my uh, the uprights are a little closer together and the, and the top of the table actually extends four inches back to the wall, which gives me sometimes things to an edge to clamp onto if I'm welding something and I want to clamp it on with a C-clamp. Well, now the fun stuff. I, I uh, bolted on an England number three vise and uh, I've got room for four angle grinders, one for cutting, one with a flap disc, one with the actual grinding disc, and then one with a cup brush. And uh, they all just hang there ready to go where well, you don't have to change uh, don't have to change grinders heads or wheels very often and uh, it's really easy. So here's the finished product with my Sears 230 amp welder on the right. Uh, the red box at the front is full of rods, chipping hammers, brushes, scrapers, all different kinds of stuff. And then I now have another box in the back which holds a lot of C-clamps and strange vice grip shapes and stuff that everyone is familiar with. And here's a shot of the end of the table with the uh, wheels and the brackets, carts, and all of the cables stored up nice off the ground and uh, how it rolls away. Quite often I'll roll it out onto the apron of the garage so I can weld outside and uh, not make a mess or smell up the garage too bad. Or the shop, I should say, now, because my garage has turned into a shop. So here we have my Bruce the Handyman version 1 sticker, which I put on everything. Uh, BTHV1 is no longer my handle on uh, YouTube, but it is still Bruce BTH version 1. And uh, I changed the name to Bruce Pender just so that I would get a few more hits and a few more subscribers. So don't hesitate to subscribe. It was a lot of fun to, uh, to make this little video while I'm laid up, and I thought I would just catch up with some of the things that I've built. All right, so here we are. We're uh, finished the catch up on the 10 year anniversary of my YouTube channel. Uh, I know it was kind of confusing. There might have been white comments in there from nine, 10 years ago, and then I added my more white con comments on top. But what the heck? It was fun. Thanks for watching this with me, and thanks for sharing the last 10 years. Some of you have been there right from the beginning, and some have just subscribed in the last two days so uh, we'll let it go thanks uh, I really had fun watching it I actually I thought the welding table was kind of interesting to watch that again because you know you remember things and then you you uh, look back and it's sometimes it's close to what you remember and sometimes it isn't but that one was close so anyway thanks for watching and we'll see you uh, on the regular grind of the one or two videos a week again soon Thanks, guys. Bye.